Hi, it's Dee Dee here. I wanted to take a few moments to talk about the pandemic with hearing loss. And I just wanted to take the time to talk about some of the strategies and um, options that I've done to make it a little easier for myself. And I'm hoping that maybe some of these tips um, can help you as well. I know that it's been pretty tough on a lot of people with hearing loss, especially myself. For an example, um, one thing that I found very difficult is lip reading. People are wearing masks everywhere, no matter where you go, whether you go to the store or whether it's at work or even walking down the street, people are wearing masks. And I have found that it's been so difficult that I just feel like my hearing has gotten worse. So I have tried a couple of things. First thing I did was I bought a box of clear masks. They're essentially just surgical masks that go around like a regular one, except that they have like a window cutout with plastic. So I've asked my coworkers to wear them at the beginning of the pandemic, and it seemed to work okay initially. But the problem was is that the masks themselves would fog up, and that would make it very uncomfortable for the person wearing it. So they didn't last very long. However, since the beginning of the pandemic, there's been many manufacturers and even just lay people in the community making masks that were clear. Associations for the deaf in the state that you're working might be having a group of girls or men and women who are making cloth masks with clear portion in the middle so that you can use and wear to hear other people because you really need to read lips which is really really important right and you know one of the things that I've noticed at work is since we've all been vaccinated in my workplace that people understand how important it is for me to read lips so they will bring their mask down to underneath their chin and they will stay six feet away from me and then I can read their lips, which has been really, really good. And the, but the thing is, of course, is another challenge is I have to make sure that I wear my glasses pretty much all the time now if people do that because I'm nearsighted and yeah, you know what I mean. If you need to have a really important conversation with somebody, maybe asking them to wear that clear mask or to step back six feet and bring the mask down so that you can read them. Just make sure that you have good lighting in the room. That's one of the um, important things. If you have too much shadow, you can't, you can't read the lips. So making sure that they have a lot of light on their face. And so the other thing is that we've had a lot of Zoom meetings. I don't know if you've been through a lot of them, but maybe you've been through FaceTime or whatnot. The good thing about videos on Zoom or FaceTime or whatever platform you're using is that most people aren't wearing a mask on the video itself. If they're doing Zoom from home, they're not wearing a mask most, most likely, unless they're with another coworker and they're in the same room, they're wearing a mask, right? But the good thing about people who aren't wearing masks during a Zoom call is that you can read their lips because the videos are right there and the person who speaks, the video always pops up. So that's a good thing. When I'm in the conference room, um, people are still wearing masks with the Zoom being up on the projector and other people who are coming in from home working remotely are on the screen and that's good. The problem I have is the room is large and it has a lot of reverberation, the high ceilings. So there's a lot of echo and it's very, very difficult to hear people on the Zoom call, even when, the, when I can see them. The people that are in the room with me, yeah, I can't hear them either because they're all wearing masks, right? Sometimes I'll bring a mask down, but still the echo of the room really makes it very challenging for me anyway. So one solution is I have a streamer that I'm wearing around my neck. I have phonics hearing aids. And this is a Phonics Compilot 2. So it's the same brand and they connect very well. If you have a different type of a brand or different manufacturer of your hearing aids, then you'll need to contact your audiologist 
and ask them which stream mode would, would go with that hearing aid. Even if you have a phonics, I still would get the streamer from your audiologist. It's really important. So with my streamer, what I do is I connect a Bluetooth to my phone. And the thing that's really good about having the streamer that connects to your phone through um, Bluetooth is that you can go on your telephone and hear through your streamer directly to your hearing aid. Now remembering that the streamer is a little box like this. It could be small or bigger depending on what, what um, brand you have. And it has this wire that goes around. It's actually a covered wire that goes around. And this essentially creates a electromagnetic field around your head. So that it connects to the T coil of your hearing aid. If you don't understand that, which can be difficult to understand, took me a long time, ask your audiologist about it. Most hearing aids have T-coil unless you opt it out when you bought the hearing aid. So just talk to your audiologist and have that conversation to find out if you have it. Because if you do have it, this thing is really a lifesaver when it comes to trying to hear you know, different things. And let me explain some more. So as I told you, I connect my streamer directly to my phone. And there's a couple of things I can do. I can call somebody on my phone and I can answer phones right from my streamer, phone calls right from a streamer. So what that happens is it takes all the, the audio and brings it directly to my hearing aid. So remember that your hearing aid is specifically programmed for your hearing loss. So that is the best way you're gonna hear audio anyway. The other thing is, is that I go on Zoom on my phone. And when I go to Zoom meetings on my phone, I can get the direct audio and I can also see the person so I can read lips. So there you go. There's two things that are improved right there. The downside, if you were to be in a conference room during a Zoom call, you being on the phone can cause some feedback. So unfortunately, have to remove yourself from that room and go find a quiet place to be, which is actually going to be beneficial to you because then you won't be distracted by, you know, too many um, people talking in the room or any other stuff. So getting into a nice quiet room, closing the door, get on your Zoom call, have your streamer go to your hearing aid, and also have the video so that you can watch it and read lips. Really, really, really good. That's helped me a lot through the pandemic. The other thing I like to do is that I have a lot of medical things I like to listen to on my podcast. So I can listen right to my podcast here, which is really good. So it's a nice little, you know, um, way of doing this. So it's really good. If you need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody who is wearing a mask or you're going to be taking a class in public, you know, in the community like I am right now. Um, I started a pottery class a couple of months ago, and the pottery class is in sort of a mill building. So it's got high ceilings. Again, what do you think, right? It's got this reverb that is unbelievable. Um, and the instructor was standing in the front of the room, and because the students were reduced because of the pandemic, you know, having to maintain that six feet apart. We only have a few students, maybe six students in this big, big large room. And so the instructor was back instructing with a mask on. I went ahead and asked my audiologist about the phonics remote mic. And the reason I wanted this is because I was hoping that I could use this tiny little device with the instructor. It has a little clip, and the clip goes right up on the shirt up here close to the mouth. And it streams, it goes right through my streamer and up to my hearing aid. So I could hear the instructor directly to my hearing aid while she's wearing a mask. And it worked pretty well. The downfall about this mic was that the instructor would be talking and having the conversation or instructing or whatnot, and then she would say, okay, everybody go to the wheels where you do your pottery, and 
and go ahead and start your project and I'll go around and demonstrate as we go. Now, if she's talking to another student, I heard all that entire conversation because she's still wearing the mic. Um, but then the student next to me wants to introduce herself and say, hey, and I can't hear her because my hearing's going to the mic. So that's a disadvantage of this mic. But it is fantastic for one-on-one -on -one conversations if you need it. So maybe ask your audiologist if there's a mic of this type for your brand of hearing aid. Now, the other thing I like to do as far as um, audio goes is I'm not always at work when I'm in a Zoom meeting. Sometimes I'm taking a training and I'm home. And so I will go on my laptop and it, cause I want a bigger screen instead of this small screen of a phone. So I want a bigger screen. And so I bring up my Zoom and, but my streamer doesn't connect through Bluetooth on my laptop. So I've had to go back to the drawing board, of course. And I basically went back to my stethoscope, which is the, Think Lab stethoscope that I have a wire connected and it goes directly to my streamer. That's how I use my stethoscope at work. So what I did was I took the wire that I use for that and it has a connector on each side. One goes to the streamer and one goes directly to my laptop for direct audio. Yes, I have this fabric that goes around my wire here for my Thinks, Thinks Lab. Um, it's more for, um, to make it a little bit more colorful around my neck and to hide the wire. Because if I have the plain wire going around and a streamer going around, and then I also connect my mic on the top of the wire so that I always have it. And so I use this pet fabric to cover it up. So let me show you how I do that. So I connect it and it's all this wire. And then I go ahead and take this fabric, slip it over the wire. Now I bought this, this um, stethoscope fabric on, I think either, e no, I didn't do it on eBay. I think it was on, um, oh my goodness, what is it on? Etsy, I think, yeah. It actually has the snap-on on there so that I can snap it together. Um, but I also slip this mic right in there too and just snap it between the wire, snap it on there. There you go. And then it covers the mic streamer all of the wire. The only thing that's really exposed is this little wire that's going around my neck right now and the stethoscope that I have right here. Now this stethoscope is pretty expensive. It's um, like $500. Might be some sales going on at some time, but right now they're 500 bucks. So I, I this thing is pretty heavy and I've, I've lost it at work. So, and I do a lot of work outside. So this is something I cannot lose. And I put this rubber band at the very end of the fabric and I left a little bit extra. So I can plug in my stethoscope. And then I go ahead and slip this thing all the way down to the end. And I take that extra that I have. So now that it's all the way around. So there you go. So that keeps it secure so it doesn't fall off. And, and then I could just put it around my neck. So I'll do another review of the Things Labs in another video. <laughs> I wanted to just kind of talk about, you know, the whole pandemic and hearing loss. I get it, I understand it, I'm with you. And there's a lot of people suffering from this. So another, tip that I want to give you is it really, really important for self-care. So self-care can mean so many different things to people, but if you can do some sort of exercise like yoga, I have some yoga classes on my YouTube, my channel, and 
yoga provides you not only the stretching, it also provides, you know, ability to, you know, strengthen your muscles, feel you a little bit more upright, also allows you to go internal, so go within, right? So you, it's a form of meditation, could you do in breathing exercises, all these things in one sort of exercise, there's a practice. So when I think about yoga, I think about the yoga mat. The yoga mat's my space. And that little space is yours. That's the place where you can go away from the external world, sit on your mat, and do yoga. Forget about the pandemic. You know, forget about the politics. Forget about work. Forget about the aggravated people because of the pandemic. You know, there's so many things going on around the world. So it's really important to get onto the mat and just give yourself a little... Give yourself a little loving, right? So giving yourself a little compassion and um, and just taking care of yourself. Maybe you want to do a formal meditation on a chair or laying down. That's great, too. You know, doing some nature walks, going out into nature, breathing the fresh air, getting some sun on your face to get the vitamin D, which helps with any kind of depression if anybody has some. Um and then when you, when you breathe in that nice air, it calms your breathing and it calms your nervous system, which obviously reduces any sort of anxiety or depression that you might be experiencing during the pandemic, because many people are. If you have children, get them out on the bikes. It's, it's about 40 degrees and sunny in New England right now. And so spring is here. We're looking forward to getting outside, taking the dogs to the park and throwing the ball for, you know, one of my dogs and walking the other ones. Go for a hike, anything. And the other thing is that I also can get um, music through my phone, through my streamer as well. And that's really nice when I want to take a long walk and just listen to music. Um, sometimes I'll listen to my podcast. Um, there's a bunch of things that, you know, a bunch of podcasts that you can look up if you're looking for something specific. Uh, you know, positive or motivating affirmations or meditation, anxiety, depression, whatever. You look it up, you find your thing and go for a walk and zone out. That's really about important thing. Other thing I love to do is I paint. I love to paint. As a matter of fact, I have a couple of my paintings over there and that really helped me to get back into the moment and zone out. All right, zone out means get away from the external world. There's so much going on right now. You need a little time for you, right? My husband makes acoustic guitars, so he made one that's small that I love to play around and hit the string and just feel the vibration. So really finding ways that make you feel calm and connected to yourself and be in the present moment. The last thing I'll mention is reflection. It's so really important to reflect back and just kind of understand what you're feeling, what you're thinking. A good way to do that is to journal. I journal every morning just to get those thoughts out on paper. You know, it helps you. It's like talking to a therapist on your journal, right? You tell somebody about your problems and or thoughts or ideas or anything. It could be anything, good, bad, happy. It doesn't matter, right? You get it off your chest. That way you have more room to just, just be, right? So journaling is a really good way to reflect and, you know, sometimes I have to reflect that I'm not the only one here during the pandemic and the only one with hearing loss. I'm not the only one that's frustrated and aggravated. Everybody's going through it. People are not seeing their families. They're, so they're not socializing as much and we're, we're social creatures. So just the whole being stuck at home, working remotely if you are you know, not connecting with your coworkers. Maybe you are working in a, a workplace and you're working with people who are frustrated. So have to remember that we're not the only ones going through it. We're here and we're doing it together. So having that perspective from your own view, but also understanding the perspective and the stories of who, you know, your coworkers or your people or your family around you. So. Don't take it too seriously if people start getting snippy at you. Just take a time out and just realize they are having a bad day or whatnot. Ask them if they need something. The pandemic and hearing loss, do the best you can to read lips, watch videos, um, whether it's on Zoom or Facebook so you can read lips. 
get a streamer connected directly to your hearing aid so you can listen to Zooms right on the on the on their platform. A phone, you have so much stuff on your phone, whether it's your phone calls, videos on YouTube, or podcasts, music. Oh my goodness. I just imagine that you can listen to all of that right directly in your hearing aid. And just remember that when, when it comes to hearing loss, it's trial and error when we want to talk about technology and assistive devices. There's so much out there that you can use. Try to pick one from this video and try it for a week or two and see if it makes a difference. I mean, this didn't just all happen overnight for me. I, this has been going on since the pandemic that I've had to add, add, add. And now I am actually in the process of ordering new hearing aids, which are quite expensive, but it is a deep no pathway technology. Like that's totally brand new. Like I'm, I'm gonna be artificially intelligent. No, so I'm looking forward to trying them. And if anything, I will post a video on my experience with those. All right. So listen, take care of yourself. Give yourself some loving, so some time away. But do the best you can to, you know, up your, your hearing so you're not as frustrated. We're going to get through this together. Take care. Peace.